Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. It's fairly well known and understood now that in the watch industry, four big companies own a whole bunch of the major brands. Swatch Group, Richemont, LVMH and Rolex are the four big players that dominate and control the industry. Well, there seems to be a similar, if slightly different thing happening in the wonderful world of micro-brand watches. The owners and operators of successful micro-brands will often start a second or even a third brand. Elshan Tang from Zelos, for example, has interest in Ergon watches and Ventus watches. Today is my first encounter with the brand Prometheus, but not my first encounter with the parent company. They're owned and operated by the same people that run Borealis watches. Now, Borealis made it to my top five micro brands of 2018 video that I made towards the end of last year. So I'm expecting big things of this Prometheus. Now, like all Borealis watches, this Prometheus Zenobia is a limited edition, but unlike them, this one has been designed with the help of the Divers Watches Facebook group. So again, I'm expecting quite a lot here. Let's flip the camera and see if this one lives up to its rep. Big thank you to Carlos, the owner of Prometheus and Borealis. In the box here, I've got a production prototype, so it's not the finished article. This one is going back to him as soon as I record the video, but he has kindly offered me a production unit for free to keep. So let's mosey over to the Prometheus website and have a look and see what's available. Now they've got their own way of taking pre-orders, this company. What they do is they take a deposit from you now, 100 US dollars in this case, and then they bill you for the rest later when the watch is available, which is scheduled to be August. So $450 in August, plus your 100 deposit equals $550 if you want one of the regular color variants. Only black and green remaining though. So the orange, the blue, and the yellow, the brighter dials have sold out. I'm not shedding too many tears personally though. I think bright dials look great in the pictures, but you gotta live with them, and I'd rather live with a black dial watch long term than an orange dial watch long term, that's for sure. Now there are gonna be a couple of changes made. From this prototype to the finished article, uh, bracelet I know is getting some attention. There's a few sticky links in this one, certainly. If you're interested in this Prometheus, I would be sending them an email. Tell them that that Scottish guy on YouTube sent you just to confirm exactly what changes are gonna be made between this prototype and the production unit. So all these standard review components today, outdoor, indoor wrist shots, loom video. I know it's a proto, I can't resist it though. I'm gonna pop that ETA 2824 onto the time grapher, see how it's performing. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna do a little bit of a strap fashion show for you as well. I reckon it's got a kind of 80s vibe happening. Sailcloth is gonna look sweet on it. And I've got a couple of NATO straps for you also. So 43 millimeters in diameter, just over 14 millimeters thick, but only 48 mil lug tip to lug tip. So for a fairly chunky watch in terms of its diameter dimension, it actually wears nicely. I'll pop it on wrist later. 22 millimeter lug width and the bracelet size for me, although I may have taken one link out too many today, 195 grams. So it's in that heavyweight division. You got an old stainless steel watch pushing up towards 200 grams, you know it's a serious unit, as it should be if it's gonna be a proper dive watch as worn by the Divers Watches Facebook group. 50,000 members, I think the biggest watch-based Facebook group in existence. They've done a bunch of special editions with companies and this is the latest of them. Now, Zenobia, what on earth does that mean? That's the name of the watch. Zenobia actually refers to a Swedish ferry that sunk off the coast of Cyprus in the 1980s and has become a haven for divers since then. So make no mistake, this is a proper dive watch, 500 meters of water resistance, super, super legible dial. 316L stainless steel case, crown, bezel, and full stainless steel bracelet. We've got solid end links, solid links, and a diver's extension on the clasp as well. Again, it's a proper dive watch today, and it's a proper milled clasp. Still a little bit of the plastic remaining on this one. Finishing on the case is excellent. I assume that it comes out of the same factory as the rest of Borealis's output, and I've always praised Borealis for their consistent quality finishing. Very nice, smooth brushing on the mid case. High polished chamfered edge, and it's quite a big chamfer. That looks great, the transition between those different finishes. 
and a very nicely machined bezel, as you can see there. The crown has the Prometheus logo on it. If I'm nitpicking, it might be just a bit too small. It's down at the four o'clock, so it doesn't dig into your wrist, but perhaps just could have done with an extra mil or two there of extra thickness just to make it a little bit grippier, but no complaints about the finishing of the case overall. Finishing on the bracelet, perhaps not quite as good as the finishing on the case though. Now this is a prototype, it's been around the world a couple of times, so forgive the scratches. High polish to those mid links, and the polish is okay, it's not as nice as the polish on the chamfered edge of the case though. I really prefer an old brush look to the bracelet. I prefer the back end of this bracelet to the front end. It does, however, feature proper screw links and a couple of different micro adjusts on this clasp as well as that diver's extension as noted. Now these diver's extension clasps, not my favorite things in the world. I find them always a little bit loose and they've always got a couple of sharp edges. But for most people, most of the time, that's gonna be closed, you're not gonna notice it. And it does have a nice action on that deployment there. As I mentioned though, I know they're gonna look into this for the production units, couple of sticky links at the top, so they need to work on the tolerances for this Jubilee style bracelet. Back to the dial and it's all simple but effective. Mixture of applied and painted. We've got applied indices, kind of pretty much like 99% of the other dive watches you've seen. Big triangle at 12, batons at the six and the nine circles everywhere else. There are date options and no date options. If you pick for the date, it's at the three o'clock framed with a white rather than a color match date wheel. I think in reality though, the white pretty much suits it. Makes it look like another index. Handset is a little bit smaller than it could have been. Perhaps a plongeur or something here would have been more noticeable, but there is some loom on that lollipop and a little orange tip to the second hand, adding a splash of color, even if you do end up going for one of these darker dial options. Now the chapter ring, MS Zenobia Sweden there, talking about the, the ship that sunk off the coast of Cyprus. For production, that's just gonna be a plain chapter ring, the Rehot dial, no inscriptions on there whatsoever. There's also Cyprus and the location that it sank at and even the depth that it's located at 42 meters, so your 500 meter Zenobia watch will have no problem getting there. As I discussed, those details will be moving onto the case bank for the production units. Let's pop up the loom video then. BGW9 gives you that nice ice white blue, but it can be underwhelming if you don't pump the watch full of it. Thankfully, wherever Prometheus slash Borealis get these made, pumps the watch full of it. Very, very impressive. Nicely balanced across the hands, the indices, and the bezel insert. Thumbs up for the loom. Now the bezel itself is 120 click unidirectional rotating dive time, as you would expect. The action sounds a little bit hollow. Nice and precise though, and there's no back play. And I do like how that Dead flat ceramic bezel insert, the dead flat crystal all sits nicely flush in the bezel. Popping a link to show you the stainless steel screw down case back, helping with that 500 meters of water resistance. So these are all gonna be individually numbered and will feature a picture of the MS Zenobia. Launched 1979, sank 1980. Not a particularly long life of service, this one. And I've no idea what a Swedish ferry was doing in Cyprus anyway. Perhaps one of you can leave me a comment telling me just what happened. Hidden behind that case back is the ETA 2824, the venerable Swiss workhorse, kind of entry level Swiss automatic movement. 25 joules, hacks, hand winds, 40 hour power reserve, 28,800 vibrations per hour. So you do get that nice smooth sweep of the second hand eight ticks per second. I know this is only a prototype, but let's chuck it on the time grapher anyway and see how it gets on. Even though it's a prototype, this movement seems to be running pretty nicely. Good amplitude, minimal beat error, and a minimal variation there with within plus or minus 10 seconds a day. The standard ETA 2824 is adjusted to two positions and giving an accuracy of plus to minus 30 seconds per day. In reality though, most of the ones that I've encountered usually run plus or minus 15 seconds per day. This one, no exception. Let's get it on wrist then, see what it looks like. 43 mil in diameter, I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference, but because of that relatively compact lug tip to lug tip of 48, bit of curvature there, it actually wears really nicely for a big watch. Now, 
Nearly 200 grams, you're gonna have to wear this one quite tight, or at least I wear big heavy watches quite tight so that they don't flop around, but super, super legible. Black on white, white on black, very, very nice, very clean aesthetic to this one. And that's it, zoomed out a bit higher. Handset, perhaps slightly small as noted, but still nice and easy to tell what time this is. Mostly brush finishes on the watch itself, but there is that center polish on those two links and a bit on the edges of the bracelet clasp as well, just adding a touch of pizzazz to a fairly staid design. I do think it looks good when you get it outside though. Again, very legible. Because of the flat sapphire crystal, dead flat ceramic, kind of continuous surface, it glints and plays with the light quite nicely when you get it outside. AR coating on that sapphire though makes it legible and as discussed, bit of curvature to the lugs, it does fit me nicely. Strap fashion show time. Now, the black dial model may be a bit of a plain Jane by comparison to some of its brighter brothers and sisters, but black is gonna look killer on a whole bunch of different straps, including this sailcloth with white stitching. And on to the first of the NATOs, this killer all black number from Monkey Swag in the UK pretty much makes any watch that I put it on look stealthy, including the Zenobia. Next up, we've got a Bond. Now I think the relatively neutral tones of the predominantly black and stainless steel watch really suit the gray and black stripes of a Trad Bond. But there will be moans and there will be niggles. The first is, well, have you ever seen a smaller end link in your life than that one? That short lug tip to lug tip of 48 mil on a big boy 43 mil diameter watch comes at a cost. Really, really tiny end links. What's the problem I hear you say? Not much of a gap between the spring bar holes and the watch itself. So you're gonna struggle putting this on chunkier straps. I even struggled to get those NATOs that I showed you on. So something worth noting, the black one definitely looks like it's gonna be a strap monster, but you might actually struggle getting the straps fitted to it. And the bracelet, as I mentioned a couple of times already, is not up to snuff on this prototype. I mean, they're onto it. They know it'll be interesting to see how they resolve this one and what the, the finished article looks like, whether they do anything with those polished surfaces as well. But I suspect they don't. They'll just work on the tolerances. They'll just work on the overall fit of the thing. So, you know, $550, it's reasonable value, uh, lots of water resistance, proper tooly, and the head of the watch at least is very well constructed but it doesn't exactly grab you by the scrotum and shout, buy me in your face, does it? It's not the most interesting watch that I've looked at on the channel, I'll be honest. Indeed, there are many more interesting offerings from within Borealis's, its sister brand's own stable. Competent, yes. Reasonable value with an ETA 2824 in the back of it, yes. Just wish it had a bit more oomph about it. So there you have it, my first encounter with Prometheus, and it is a chunky mofo of a watch, this one. As discussed in the review, a lot of the more out there colorways have sold out. There's still plenty of black and green dial ones available, as well as the Meteorite for 100 US dollars premium. The ship may have sunk, but there's plenty of life left in the Zenobia. Thanks for watching, see you soon.